Hey there. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I got a perfect t-shirt. All right. Joe's there? Yeah. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Joe? Um, doing okay, man. It's been a wild and crazy day. But other than that, <laughs> I guess they're all like that in the spring over here. So how you both been? You been all right? Start stuff starting to green up a little bit over there or not? Uh yeah. I mean you still you see some blood on the trees and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Snow's pretty much melted away all over. So I did some uh some seeding very, very late and I, I did it with a like late last fall and I did it with a uh, a tall fescue which notoriously really needs warm soil to germinate and uh but I put it in anyway. I thought, yeah, what the heck, it'll come up when it comes up. And uh, the other Eric, Eric Denise, uh, just walked in like 30 minutes ago, and he said that um, he actually sees all the grass, germ not all of it, but some of the grass germinating in this spot. So uh, it, it kind of threw my whole thing to the wind because I said, you know, you need like 60, 65 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, like soil temperature to get tall fescue to germinate well. But uh, I, I believe it's been pretty well saturated from the winter. So um, yeah. Yeah, so it was ready to kind of pop as soon as some sunlight hit it. So it, I guess, apparently decided yesterday and today to start popping. So it's it's happening, whether people want to look that way or not. It's coming. It's it's going to yeah. it's going to hit us. So, so what do you guys got going over there? Right. Um, so I haven't done anything to it probably what two years now, three years. So now it's kind of taken over. This past summer with all the rain that we had, I mean, it was it was really cool weed. It's hard to even cut it just because it was all sticky and all kinds of nasty stuff in it. And um, so now we're at the point like what we like to get it back to some decent health. You know, get rid of the weed, not all of them completely, but you know, get them down so we the grass isn't being choked out. And then, you know, then kind of support the grass that's there, too, with fertilizer or whatever. So would you say that you have, uh, is it safe to say that you have 50% grass and 50% weeds? Or do you think you've got, like, maybe a little bit more percentage of grass left in your lawn? I would say it's 50-50. Okay. Um, so I pretty much know what I have to tell you already. Um, but is there, what's the main impetus now between wanting to go at it a little differently than what you did before? Was there something that changed or? No, I think we just want to make it the healthy, you know, more healthy again. Um, and, and not necessarily dump like bad chemicals on it. Like we, I think one time, did we use like one doctor or somebody and they come out? Of course it looked great. Yeah. Well, like that stuff smells pretty strong. And now we have a dog, and we want to let him, you know, yeah. let him outside play, and not have to worry about him tracking in it, you know, licking the ground and getting sick. And I don't know. It's just yeah. So now we're kind of looking at more of a natural approach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not something that I don't know. Lots of years ago, that it wasn't as prevalent. It was on your mind, but you know, I mean, I read so much more about the organic and everything. And, like, yeah, I, I just don't want to put chemicals at all, anywhere, in, in the house or out of the house. All right. So, I guess, I guess for me, the best place for me to start is um, if, you, if you had a decent lawn, uh, the process would be a little bit less painful. <laughs> yeah. um, because what all we would do would be to transition you from synthetic uh, fertilizers or synthetic chemical fertilizers, however you want to phrase it, and we'd move we'd move you to certified organic fertilizers, <clears throat> and um, eventually this is something you're going to have to know because once you get more grass growing, you're going to need to understand the difference between the synthetic fertilizers and the 
uh, quote unquote, organic or natural fertilizers. And basically there's a very basic difference. The synthetic fertilizer, and we, we're not gonna talk about, you know, like the Chesapeake Bay or uh, the yeah. Conestoga or any of that. We can talk about this environmental stuff all day long. Um, and uh, some will agree with us and some will not. But um, what's important for you to know on your patch of heaven, so to speak, is that that soil, um, yeah. it's supposed to be alive. And, it, and yeah. you know, so it would be more like a living soil as opposed to a lifeless dirt. The, the more you use a synthetic fertilizer, uh, you're actually salting the soil. And as you know, when you put salt on a slug, you um, the slug shrivels up and dies, right? So it's like reverse osmosis. It's pulling the fluids of life out of that slug in the direction of the salt you put on the outside of the slug and that's how it, it dries up and so when you put a salt-based fertilizer down which these uh, synthetic uh, chemical fertilizers are they're like salt-based fertilizers so every time you put one down it's like salting your soil and you're literally beating back the biology slowly 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 but surely over a period of years and the biology is the natural soil aeration mechanism. It's the natural thatch decomposition mechanism. The biology is also the natural uh, nutrient chelating mechanism to make nutrients available to the plants that are growing there and a whole bunch more things. And so long story short, if we use the synthetic fertilizer, we're beating up this natural biological mechanism that does all these wonderful things for our soils and then therefore for our plants that are captive audiences to that soil, they can't move like you and I can. So the plants are just, they're stuck there. But if you use an organic fertilizer and it's a good quality organic fertilizer, what you're basically doing is instead of suppressing or killing biology, you're actually enabling and feeding and growing out biological communities in your soil. Um, and the more diverse your products are that you apply in their ingredients, the more you will invite a diverse range of biology to your soil. And then, then it'll just become a very actively living soil, which imparts all these various benefits to the plants growing there. So long story short, you gotta get grass, but once you get grass, you're going to need to let your soil uh, kind of come back to life, if you will. And, and you're going to have to nudge it gently along the path of coming back to life. And so um, now the trick, it, it, there's a balance because like this thing called a lawn or your trees and shrubs, they're investments that the two of you are making in your property for whatever, for whatever your reasons or choices. Um, so there's money involved. And if you if you invest, say, in the stock market, you want it to do well because you don't want to lose your cost basis, you know, the original money you invested and you're hoping it grows. And so in the lawn, you're hoping that any money you put into it, that it's actually benefiting you in such a way that maybe it won't cost as much down the road and it'll look a whole lot better and achieve the purpose of what you wanted. Um, so that's that's the direction that I would take you if I were helping you. And in this case, what I'm going to tell you, it's going to kind of scare you a little bit, but I'm actually going to tell you to kill off your existing lawn um, because you have, you know, 50 percent, give or take, of existing grasses. And in this area, what you really should have in your lawn are uh, what we call turf type tall fescues. Mm -hmm. And for a couple of extra pennies, literally, you can get what we call an endophyte enhanced turf type tall fescue. Mm -hmm. As long as your dog is not a dog that eats a lot of grass. If, yeah, no, all right, so if your dog doesn't make a habit of eating a lot of grass, um, then the endophytes won't bother your dog. But what the endophytes will do is there are little beneficial fungi that lives in the grass plant where the leaf of the grass plant meets the stem. And in the middle of the summer, when nobody knows what they're looking at, 
things like army worms, sod web worms, and chinch bugs will not successfully feed on your lawn and cause your lawn a lot of damage because of these things called endophytes that are growing in that grass, okay? So it's like having a built-in biological pest control okay. for turf insects if you get a grass that has a high endophyte population. Um, the reason that I said an endophytically enhanced turf type tall fescue is that the parentage of a turf type tall fescue can be super coarse, super coarse, and uh, it just it just gives you a pretty coarse look for a lawn. If you actually come by the front of our office, what you'll see is we have these endophytically enhanced turf type tall fescues here. Um, and during the growing season, when the grass is actively growing, um, we actually mow it at three and three quarter inches here, um, which allows the root the roots to grow more deeply and ex and exponentially so, um, which helps it in the drought period of the summer. And in the summer, if it gets at all hot and dry, we move our cutting height up to four inches. Now, in a, in a normal grass, like bluegrass or ryegrass, which is probably what you have a mix of in your lawn now, yeah. uh, if you were to cut it up at three and a half or four inches, that grass wants to flop over because uh, it doesn't have a lot of strength to the, to the blade. A, yeah. a turf-type tall fescue, um, it's, it's been cultivated in such a way that they've chosen for some of the better... Uh, characteristics, if you will, of, of some of the fescue grasses. And um, they've got a, a pretty like stiff, uh, kind of tall, like a soldier would stand in formation. You know, the, the grass wants to look more like that. And when you cut it at three and three quarter inches or even four inches in the summer, it's still looking good and strong and tall, okay? Um, and it's a strong looking one and it does really well in this area. So, the key is to um, get this grass sown at the right time of year, all right? Um, okay. And I'll be honest with you, now's not the right time. Even though I started this conversation with the fact that I was surprised because we have some germination out there, this time of year you get a lot of crabgrass germination, like when the forsythia start to bloom around your home or in your neighborhood, um, yeah. that yellow blooming shrub, forsythia. When, when you see that, that's about the time that crabgrass is starting to germinate throughout the bare spots of your lawn. And so I'm jumping around a lot, but I'm trying to lead you to the, to the place where I'm going to say, which is now, um, what you really need to do is put up with your lawn until about mid-August. Yep. And then one way or another either naturally and we can discuss those options or with one chemical application it'll be your choice you're the homeowner you're the property owner you're the dog owner um but one way or another we need to eradicate your existing 50 percent weeds and 50 percent lawn grass mm -hmm. and we need to introduce an endophytically enhanced turf type tall fescue about a week or two later so that right around the beginning of September, you are getting um, a new lawn put in and uh, you begin the process of watering said lawn areas that you seed. Um, and we provide you with a, I mean, whether we do it or not, or I help you just figure out how to do it, we have a, a watering and uh, post seeding guide that will walk you through virtually all of the questions that will come to your mind during the process of growing in a new lawn. Um, and it's a, it's a document that Eric Denise, uh, my compadre here, uh, has produced as we've talked over the years about these various things that homeowners uh, ask about. He's produced this document over uh, a couple decades now. So, um, and uh, it's super helpful to people. Um, and so what it really means is if you get your new seed in the ground, 
Um, I like to tell people a minimum of 10 days, but I would prefer to see more like 15 days before the September full moon, okay, which is the harvest moon, technically speaking. Um, if you get your seed in and you water it for 15 days leading up to that September full moon, what's going to happen is that you'll be watering and the seed will become saturated. And that means that that seed's going to be primed with water and just sitting in the right position for gravity and long days and soil warmth and all this fun stuff to act on it because tall fescue likes that kind of waning summer soil warmth with a little bit of cool air from early fall starting to move in. And it germinates really well. And then by Thanksgiving, you have a very good looking lawn. It'll blow you away how good the lawn will look by Thanksgiving. You'll drive in your driveway, you'll leave for work, you'll look out from the dinner table at Thanksgiving and you'll say, you know what, I didn't think it was possible, but look at that. Um, and it, the key is that September full moon because right after that September full moon, about three to five days after, if you seeded 15 days prior, if you followed our aftercare guide, um, after seeding guide, um, about three to five days after the full moon, you will literally start to see grass popping. And it's going to look like little peach fuzz, little hue of green, if you will, everywhere. If you get down on your hands and your knees, you'll actually see all this little grass popping up and um, it'll look like, you know, five o'clock shadow kind of thing going on. Um, but uh, then what you do is after the full moon, temperatures usually start to wane in late September and early October. And um, you start getting a little bit of cooler temperatures. And because of that, you retain a little bit more soil moisture because it's not evaporating due to the summer heat anymore. So right. then you have to water less and less and less and less. And, and by usually by like October uh, 5th or 15th, you're not watering at all. Okay. Okay. And um, it just depends on the season. That's why I said October 5th or 15th. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you're getting rain, which the fall tends to be the higher moisture content season, of the year. Typically, last year was unique, but typically the fall is the highest moisture content season. Um, you often can just drop that watering off and the rain just takes care of things. And it just grows in. And all you do is put down an organic fertilizer with the seed. When you put the seed in, you just put the organic fertilizer right over top of it. Um, we have a great product called 524. Uh, which has soluble seaweed extract and soluble humate extract in it, which means nothing to you, but it improves germination um, considerably. Um, and uh, it's a certified organic product, whether that matters or not uh, to you. And then um, in the fall, we have another product called 1005, which is also certifiable organic. Uh, and you put that down about five weeks after you put down the 524 and the seed. And it really just pushes everything in really well. Um, and you, you don't want to do a whole lot more uh, in the fall. You just kind of want to, you'll have to keep the leaves off of it while it's germinating. So if you have a blower, that's, yeah. fan, that's fantastic. So you'll, you'll walk. And I'm going to say this and you're going to think, hey, this guy's crazy. Um, but you want to walk heel to toe as you walk across your lawn during the fall. Um, because as you walk heel to toe, you're not spinning on the ball of your foot to turn. Um, mm -hmm. So like you will start to mow once or twice uh, in October. And when you start to mow, you want to walk heel to toe and not spin on the ball of your foot to make a turn. Because even though the grass will be three, three and a half inches tall, um, the root system is about the size of a nickel if you're lucky. Um, so the root system will continue to grow into the fall, even into the early winter if we have mild temperatures. Um, and, and that's the part we care about. We don't care about the tops as much as we care about the root system, okay? Because 
plants grow roots in the fall to store their carbohydrate foods for the coming spring season. Um, and in the spring, they're just using up all those carbohydrate food reserves from the roots because they haven't yet had a chance to photosynthesize a lot for themselves. Uh, so they, they're using from their, their storage capacity and their roots. So the fall is critical uh, to store all those carbohydrates. The plants grow bigger roots. It's kind of like building a bigger cold cellar to put your, uh, you know, your uh, canned goods, if you will, uh, in the cold cellar. You, you increase the size of your cold cellar to store more canning uh, goods and vegetables and what have you. Um, yeah. The plant does the same thing to store its food. It grows its uh, cold cellar, meaning its roots. Um, and then it stores its food, and, and that's how those roots enlarge. Um, so our, the, the goal for us then would be to just keep fertilizing. But in the spring, the first spring, meaning next spring, a year from now, um, yeah. you're going to want to use a, a pre-emergent crabgrass control on your lawn. Now, the basic choices you have are you either put down a chemical or because of what you said in the beginning of this call, you can put down corn gluten. Um, I strongly recommend that you use a minimum of 20 pounds per thousand square feet. And you're going to be able to listen to this. This is being recorded. Um, okay. So it'll end up on, on our uh, plantsoilhealth.com website. Um, it'll just take me, you know, like a week or two to get the, the web guy uh, to make sure it's posted. But nonetheless, um, it'll be there uh, and you'll be able to refer to it. Um, and it's customized to your property. So that's really nice. Um, but the uh, <clears throat> um, next year, when you put down a pre-emergent, if you use a product called corn gluten, you want to use an ample enough amount of it to get the crabgrass prevention qualities. And by using an ample amount of it, you're going to put down a little more nitrogen than a lot of turf grass guys would necessarily recommend in early spring. But worry not, because it's a slower release form of nitrogen, and it'll, it'll really thicken up your lawn while keeping the crabgrass down, which is exactly what you want, because crabgrass germinates in bare soil that is drier and hotter. If you have a lot of tall grass and you have a very thick lawn, the sun's not going to hit the soil so much. It's not going to dry it out. It's not going to heat it up. And it's going to be, um, crabgrass just doesn't like to germinate there. So okay. um, when you look at our lawn out front here at the business or at my parents' house or at my own home property, um, and I can give you all those addresses uh, to drive around and see by email or whatever, but I don't put down a, a, a crabgrass control at all. And you, you want to the first spring after a fall seeding because it just gives your lawn and your investment a, a leg up. It gives it a chance to thicken up. Right. Once you get it thick, then it's just mowing it right and taking care of it the first summer, meaning what would be if you did this in the fall or uh, in September you seeded. So September of 19 you seed the first summer the summer of 2020, you, uh -huh. you'll want to you'll want to keep an eye on it for, for watering if we get into any real dry stages because the roots, they're growing, but they're at that point, they're only about two or three inches. Um, and so what you really want to do is just water as needed, but not excessively. And, and yeah. the watering guide will show you how to do all of that and it'll tell you about the first summer. Um, if you don't water it and get into a two-week drought, you could lose part of that investment that you made in your lawn. Okay. But then comes the fall, the second fall. And man, you really grow some serious roots that second fall. And tall fescue, its roots are just as tall. Okay, so where ryegrass and bluegrass don't like to root really deeply, Tall fescue, if it's given an open, loose, well aerated soil, biologically aerated soil, those roots will grow exceptionally deep. And on, as an example, my mother's lawn, if I take a, a sampling tool, a core sampling tool to my mother's lawn and I punch a core down into the ground, 
I have 27 inch deep roots wow. in, in her lawn, okay? And, and that lawn has never been aerated ever with a, with a machine, okay? Right. Um, and if you turn, if you go into that lawn and you flip a shovel full of dirt over, uh, you know, the earthworms literally just come crawling out of a hole, like a something the size of a basketball. You flip that much soil over um, and the earthworms literally come out of all the sides. Um, yeah. So it's it's pretty intense what you can do. We've never dethashed. We've never aerated. Um, and the grass just grows on its own, except out front where we have excessive shade. So that's yet another story. Tall fescue is one of your best options. Uh, okay. in the shade because it has a wider leaf blade um, okay. and a wider leaf blade collects more sunlight and okay. sunlight is how a plant feeds itself so right. so you just want to you want to kind of understand that fertilizers are when you apply a fertilizer Joe and Jacqueline mm -hmm. um, yeah. all that fertilizer is really doing is it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a bakery ingredient delivery truck dropping off flour and eggs and raw sugar to the bakery. We wouldn't necessarily eat the raw eggs. We wouldn't necessarily eat the flour. Um, some might eat the sugar, but um, it's not what we would preferably do. Um, but the baker bakes a cake with that. And when you apply fertilizer to a lawn, you're delivering the ingredients like a, an ingredient delivery truck. Mm -hmm. And the chloroplast bakes a cake called photosynthate carbohydrate sugars. And that photosynthate carbohydrate sugar that the process of photosynthesis makes in the chloroplast of, of each and every grass plant or tree or shrub. That photosynthate carbohydrate sugar is the only true plant food that a plant can use. And, and this is why we wanna grow a really healthy plant that has um, <clears throat> all it needs in terms of ingredients. It doesn't just need nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You can grow a plant, but it's gonna be kind of sterile. It's, it, it'd be like growing on just protein shake. Um, or just steak or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> long story short, um, you know, at some point you will want to use, because all lawns are monocultures, meaning uh -huh. it's kind of like a farm field of nothing but corn. Um, yeah. It's a monoculture. Um, and lawns are monocultures. So nature really wants to introduce diversity all the time. So it wants to grow a couple weeds in your lawn. It's just a fact, okay? Yeah. And the dog's going to run across the lawn, and it's going to start ripping this way and ripping that way and tearing and so on and so forth. And when that little divot occurs, you're going to get a little bit of bare soil, uh, and yeah. that's where weeds are going to want to germinate, okay? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> basically what I'm saying is at some point, you'll want to go around and spot treat with an herbicide. Again, you don't have to use a synthetic chemical herbicide, um, mm -hmm. but I will tell you flat out that they're more effective than any organic option on the market. If you, if you select or elect to use an organic herbicide, of which none are certified organic they're just called organic in this particular case but they would yeah. be they would be more natural um yeah. if you would choose to use one of those you'll probably have to spray two or three times more often to get the same result and it won't work on certain weeds mm -hmm. so depending on how much of a fanatic you are um you know, you'll you'll either choose to go that more natural route with that more natural product, use a little more product, spray a little more often, and then the ones that it doesn't really work well on, hand weed, or and this is we're talking like every two or three years. It's the fescue right. does the fescue does a great job against weeds, um, but 
if you use a synthetic, I would strongly recommend that you spot treat with a synthetic in like early October each year, not the first year when you just seed it because it'll it'll harm the new grass. But one year later, if you need to clean up a couple spots of weeds, I would strongly recommend you do it in early October. Use a synthetic, use one of those little hand pump sprayers and um and just go around and spot treat the weeds. And and <clears throat> remember what I said in the fall, the plant is trying to store carbohydrate food reserves in the roots. Uh, so the saps are flowing more to the roots. So it will translocate or carry the herbicide to the roots more effectively, and you'll get a more effective kill of that weed. Yeah. Um, so it just means that instead of just burning the tops off, because a lot of guys like to do weed control in the spring, they're not always getting good root control. They're just kind of burning the tops down, which keeps them coming back year after year. Um, yeah. You know, because the plant, some of the plants want to regrow. Um, do you have any questions before I keep bloviating here? Because I can keep going and going and going. No, I understand. It's good information. Um, so it's, it's kind of like you got to take it back to ground zero. Yep. And then, and then build upon that, so to speak, to get a, you know, a good foundation, proper treatments. Instead of like just wasting money just pouring chemicals or whatever we're using onto something that currently exists that's really not going to do a whole lot because we have to fix the root problem. Well, and if you try to put seed in this spring, yeah, seed doesn't really like to germinate till the soil warms up because the seed likes to feel cozy like we do on a winter night. Yeah. And and so um, that seed doesn't want to germinate. So about the about the moment it starts to germinate really well for you, yeah, crabgrass is germinating right beside it. Right, right. And then just two months later you're in, you know, you're like July 1st or, or maybe two and a half months later, July 1st. Now we're yeah. seeing hotter, drier weather. And right. gu guess which one of those plants thrives in the hotter, drier weather, crabgrass or two and a half year old turf grass? Right. Crabgrass, right? So, yeah. so then what happens is your, your new turf grass with a, a dime or, or a nickel sized root system, it just, turns up its toes and dies if it doesn't get enough water where the crabgrass is loving life because now the soil's hotter, it's drier, and it's more bare and lots of sunlight. Right. Um, so people that seed in the spring, they often look at themselves, pat themselves on the back a month after they did their work, and right. they're thinking how great it looks. Um, but then another month or two later, they're looking out and they're saying, what happened to my lawn? Uh, right. It looks so good. And what happened was there was no root system to support its subsistence and the heat yeah. and the drier stuff took it out. So if you start in the fall, uh, well, what we call the agronomic fall. So if you, you know, uh, remove the existing lawn in August, however you and I, you know, decide to do it or you decide to do it, I can advise you on each and every step along the way. I have no yeah. problem doing that. Um but uh, how, whatever you do, do that in August and then seed in the beginning of September. Yeah. And and that's the ticket, man. It's just it's and make sure that if it happens to be a, a early full moon in September, then, you know, let, let's say it's September, you know, uh, 20th full moon. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, so then you want to have your seed in the ground by the 5th of September or at the very latest, the 10th of September. Um, okay. And then start watering immediately and faithfully. And that immediate and faithful watering leading up to the full moon, through the full moon, and for about three to five days after, that, that um, you know, real religious kind of, you know, approach to it will give you a really nice result. Um, that's about it. And then, okay. you know, and, and that's really all you're doing. Um, we have products that... We have a product called Finesse GVH. If you need to expedite aeration in your soil for some reason, let's say it's severely compacted and you want the, uh, the roots to grow a little bit better, the Finesse GVH, um, if you apply it, especially in the fall, 
it the earthworms love it and they come up for it and they grab it and they take it down into their um channels so to speak uh and they store it because they love the the product itself it's a good food source for them um so that helps with we call it the coreless aeration it's a good product okay that's good stuff yeah i guess we just have to figure out a game plan here and what Crap all summer long then? Yes. Yeah. Well, because we've got family coming in and we've got a wedding and we've got maybe a graduation party. All right. So if you want to do something about all of that. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let me think for a second. Um, fescue takes longer to germinate. Um, in terms of days, and therefore it can be subject to more competition from crabgrass that's germinating at the same time. Uh -huh. um, you can try to push that fescue in if you want in the spring, but you're really going to have to baby it all summer long because it will not have the root system to sustain itself. And yeah. you're, you're probably going to have to use... Um, uh, what we call a post-emergent crabgrass control because almost no matter what grass you put in this spring it will it will be challenged by crabgrass because the, because they're germinating at the same time and and so you're gonna have to get a hold of a post-emergent crabgrass control and um, there isn't anything organic that's going to do that. Um, and then even if you're successful with that post emergent crabgrass control, you'll probably have some other weeds that come in. So now you'll have to do a little bit of weed control too. Yeah. And then let's say you're successful keeping out the crabgrass or at least eradicating it when it tries to germinate with your new lawn and new grasses. Yeah. Um, and the same with the weeds. Well then, now you have to make sure that you water it because remember its root system is going to be like tiny yeah. and you have to keep that soil moist all summer long or it will, you know, pockets where they dry out will fail on you um, yeah. or where there's extreme competition from a tree that's like going for water hard because it's starting to dry up outside. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying don't do it. But what I'm saying is it does it does multiply your problem. Yeah. Uh, and if you are spending more time trying to do family events and prepare for family events and things like that, you're going to be doubling your duty because in addition to getting ready for those things, you're going to have to get ready for the lawn. And it, because you're going to have more more work for sure in the spring than you would normally otherwise have had you seeded yeah. in the fall. Okay. Yeah. Now, last comment. And Jacqueline, this is to basically try to address the question that you asked. Um, uh, you can go out and just get ryegrass, like a like a tri rye, we call it uh, a tri rye blend. And you can rent a slice seeder, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, or uh, or you can do it all by hand. Uh, there's a there's a, a particular hand implement. Uh, that you can even come borrow from me if you want. Um, but it's, it, you know how I work out and you know how I like my physical labor. Uh, you, you have to love this tool, okay? Because, <laughs> because it's going to give you a workout just in your front lawn. I know how big your front lawn is. Just your front lawn, it'll give you a workout. You will definitely want a beer later that night, okay? Um, but... Uh, it is actually one of the better ways to get soils that are uneven um, yeah. and without spending a lot of money. So if you just broadcasted ryegrass yep. and then you just punched it all in with this hand tool, um, yeah. the bottom line is you throw down a little bit of fertilizer. It can yeah. be organic or not organic, but it'll, it, ryegrass will jump pretty quickly. Um, and you don't have to get too obsessed with the weeds and stuff and crabgrass because you know 
if you if you think you're gonna eradicate the lawn anyway in in August, um, right. you don't have to get too silly crazy. But if you want it to look presentable, as yeah. opposed to looking like it's uh, it's got bare spots and mud holes and all that kind of thing. You know, you can work on on just getting some ryegrass popping all over the place. And if, if you were to do that, I'd go get tri rye right now. I'd broadcast it and I'd start punching it in. You know, when you have a little extra time, that way, if you start sooner rather than later, it's going to start germinating for you over the next four weeks, five weeks, six okay. weeks. You see. Um, it's just the way it is. I mean, and if you if you think that there's a chance, if you think there's a chance that you might not want to eradicate it after you've gone to all that hard work, well then go ahead and start with the endophyte enhanced turf type tall fescue. But but just understand that you'll probably lose some of it to weed competition and some of it to summer dry conditions yeah and then you're going to have to just go around and punch the same kind of grass into the holes that didn't make it uh yeah. in september again i mean yeah. it's so, so, so then there's the possibility of having maybe a nice fall and it's just going to take a lot of work well you mean if you start in the spring Yeah, so you used the term, we can have a nice lawn, but it's just going to take the work. And yeah. and so what I'm going to say to you is, yeah, you, defi like you definitely can have a nicer lawn. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, you know, I mean, it doesn't look so good right now. And it's, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm going to put a lot of time and energy into putting a garden together this summer. <laughs> I'll I'll just see if I can bleep that one out for the recording I purposes. <laughs> That's all right. They don't know you like I know you, Jacqueline. <laughs> clean it up. Clean it up. <laughs> um, that was great. Um, so, I, I, long story short, though, I think. Um, you got a pretty good idea, and yeah. if if you two of you talk and you decide this is what you want to do, um, and you want to kind of go at it this spring and try to use the more desirable grass, well, I mean, you can go get turf type tall fescues pretty much anywhere these days in this area, but you can't get endophyte enhanced turf type tall fescues. Okay which is what gives you that built-in biological control against foliar, foliar feeding insects. Um, so uh, if you want that, you're probably gonna come to me um, and that's okay because it doesn't cost you that much more than a regular grass anyway. It's literally not much more at all. Um, you know, we want people to get the right stuff in their lawns. So um, other than that though, that's about it. Hey Eric, one question. Yeah. Like what if I was just in the short term approach for like part of the summer to get the backyard look a little better? If I wasn't pushing down synthetic, you know, uh, crabgrass prevention or weed killer. Yep. Um, it, I mean, how how bad how how bad or is it not that bad? Like for the for it's organic. Is it an organic one? Or you said no. It's not an organic. I I just I just wouldn't spend the money on the organic. Uh, yeah. Not the not the crabgrass one. I mean, you can. But it's a it's considerably more expensive. Um, I I would be uh, okay. So let me let me phrase this the way I think. Number one, your grab all your crabgrass from last year is dead. It's yeah. dead because crabgrass is an annual weed grass. Okay. It's not a perennial. It's an annual. Right. But but it dropped a boatload of seed last year yeah. 
because it because right it creeps it creeps across the lawn in a prostrate fra fashion. It just grows horizontally, right? Yeah. So it, it grows below your mower cutting height, and um, it dropped all that seed, and that's why people use a pre-emergent because okay. when that seed starts to germinate, that seed grows up and it hits this chemical barrier that you applied. So when you put down a chemical pre-emergent crabgrass material, it, it literally, you know, the rain hits it, the dew hits it, it melts down in, and it creates this barrier right at the surface of the soil. And so when the crabgrass tries to come up through, the crabgrass hits it and dies before it gets a chance to get established. Okay. The, the, remember one thing, though. If it does that for crabgrass, yeah. it'll do that for your normal grass. So if you think you're going to put that down and seed good grass into it, forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the new grass is going to germinate. It's going to hit the same barrier. It's going to die yeah. right away. Okay. okay? Yeah. So if I were trying to do what – I heard your question, and now I'm going to kind of – I wanted to make sure I addressed that whole crabgrass thing. But what I would do – is I'd go in there and I'd do that seeding work that we talked about. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I would just, uh, um, I just thought of something else I would need to address with you. But um, I would do the seeding work, and then I would just do whatever fertilizers you want to push it in. Okay. You know what I mean? Like if you want to use the synthetic fertilizer, just yeah. push it in. Now, if you want to use a, an organic product that that is organic and um, pushes it in, and it's pretty competitive in cost, get yeah. our 1005 because okay. our 1005 will push it in very nicely. You only use seven and a half pounds per thousand square feet, which is a lot closer to what a chemical fertilizer would be in terms of use. Um, and it's organic, and we designed it to be a product that can be used just like that. So, okay. um, so it's just a it's a semantics thing. Do you want a natural organic product? Then get our ten zero five. If you want a synthetic, because you just you know it, each time you put it down, you can save ten bucks or twenty bucks or whatever it is on your yard. Um, have at it all day. Uh, you know, it's the synthetics are going to beat back your your soil biology a little bit more, but if it's not if you're not overdoing it, you're not going to overdo the, the biology. Okay. Okay. Now, one one last thing. What, do you have a question? So, basically, just to kind of circle back. So, if we're going to put the ryegrass in, push that, get that in pretty soon. Uh, and then, to enhance it, put the, the, the 10, what's it, the 1005 kind of the... Yep. Yep. Bolster, bolster. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to, and to enhance it again, just so you know, to enhance it again, you're going to want to come back six weeks from now and do the same thing again with 1005. Okay. Because you, you have to push it in. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Um, and then at some point after the forsythia blooms, maybe three weeks later or something like that, uh, go online and search, you know, what a small germinating crabgrass plant looks like. And when you see that small germinating crabgrass plant or a number of them starting to try to kind of creep in on you, yeah. then go get one of those post-emergent crabgrass controls and, yeah. do, and do not use it heavily. Only use like a half of the label rate. Okay. And then that way you're using less active ingredient that can hurt your dog and you're only spraying it where you have any kind of crabgrass starting okay, okay. Yep. the trick is not to let the crabgrass start to sprawl too far because when it sprawls horizontal to the ground it literally out competes turf grass and it just suffocates the other turf grass okay and and please mow high when I say mow high, and you have to check your mower to make sure that it'll it'll even do this for you, but um, you want to mow, really, once this grass starts to grow this spring, you're going to want to mow no less than three and a half inches. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, 
and any questions you have during the year, I mean, Jacqueline has my number. Uh, you now have my number. Uh, just yeah. just call me. I mean, you, you don't have to wait. No offense, Jacqueline, but he doesn't have to wait till you're there. He can just call me real quick with a two minute question, and likewise, you can call me with a two minute question. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you go if you go. The beauty of it is this, and that's the beauty of our website. If you go to the website and you just order ten zero five, um, or the grass seed, um, which we call endurance, by the way, um, if you go to the website and you order any of these products, instead of asking them to be shipped, you have an option, uh, which for you would be um, to pick up at the Lancaster warehouse, and the option literally says. Uh, please call us when the product is ready so we can come to the Lancaster Warehouse and pick it up. Okay. okay. And where are you talking about all this from the Avenue? Yeah, the, the one you've yeah. been here to for meetings for the reunions. Yeah, yeah. I've got, and, yeah and I've already set up an account because I got that really great soap product you have. Oh, thank you so much. That was a nice plug. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love that product, by the way. But, yeah. It's a great product. What the hell? It works, you know? Yes. And it's a nice natural product, so. Um, but yeah, so um, so that would work for you because then what will happen is Rachel or someone will give you a call and say, "Hey, Jacqueline," or "Hey, Joe," uh, or they'll if you ask her to text you or she'll email you whatever you ask her to do, um, and uh, and you'll just get contacted and we'll put it out for you and you can just pick it up. Okay. And if you want to pick it up after hours, then it'll probably be when somebody's here. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. It's great information. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think we have a plan. Yep. We, if we, if we can listen to it. We'll wait until it gets loaded up. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And then just, but I mean, even if you decide not to wait till it gets loaded for a week or two, yeah, and you yeah. just get yourself some ryegrass and then come over and borrow the tool. That way you don't yeah. have to buy the tool because it's like 120 bucks or something like that. Okay. Um, it's indes it's indestructible, but um, I mean you'll get a little workout, Joe. Uh, I I get it, um, but you'll be all right with it. Um, and if you spread it out over like two weeks of like you know 30 minutes tonight and 30 minutes tomorrow night and so on and so forth, you'll get in good shape and you'll feel like you had some good exercise. And in two weeks you'll be done. You can probably do the whole front and halfway out your backyard um at least so okay. all right sounds good i appreciate it yeah no worries y'all take care okay Thanks. Thanks a lot. You too, yep we'll see you soon all right bye-bye okay.